Isaiah 54. I, this is one of my favorites. God ministered this to me years ago when, he, when I was going through the inner healing stage of my life right before I married Milton. Sing, O barren, thou that did not bear. Ooh. Some of us feel so barren. And I'm not talking about women, y'all. I'm talking both male and female. Some of us feel so non-productive, so backwards, so lost. Sing, O oh barren. It didn't say cry. It said sing. Sing, O oh barren, thou that did not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that did not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. See, you're going to look back on your life. There's going to come a point. This is, I'm going to have my two cents in between. There's going to come a point where God is going to look, uh, show you your life. And you're going to look back. And all the people that were passing you by, oh, they were flying by in the spirit. They were singing. They were preaching. They were being used mightily. They were being blessed financially. They got this house and that house and this husband and that wife. And woo, sky's the limit. I mean, they they tooling down the road in blessing. And you put putting around there and not even knowing the difference between, I won't say that, I'll be nice. Uh, anyway, you're putt putting feeling lost. Let's leave it at that for right now. And, and you feel non-productive. You feel like, well, you know, when is my day coming? When do I get to know how God wants to use me? Well, do I have anything to offer? Does God want to use me? Or am I not even worthy of his time? And that's the way many of us feel. We feel like, you know, what am I, a chopped liver? But I want to share with you. You are the main ones that God's going to use in the mightiest way toward the end. A lot of people get theirs up front. But there comes a point where you go through the seesaw in life. My father taught me this, and I found it to be true over and over and over again. There are folks that will bypass you like they will fly by you like you're standing still. Just like a car driving 150 miles an hour down on the freeway. You're driving 65 and they fly past you so fast you feel like you're practically sitting still. Let me tell you, baby cakes, you may feel like you're sitting still. You may feel like you're marking time. You may feel like you're getting nowhere. But I want to tell you, you are the one that when God really needs to use his people in the mightiest way, you're going to be in that number. Because all the time they were getting there, God was developing you. All the time they were getting there, God was growing you. All the time they were getting there, God was teaching you. All the time they were getting there with abundance, God was pruning you and chipping away at you and getting rid of as much flesh as he could because he knew that when, he, when the nitty-gritty really hits the fan, he needs power. And you can't be powerful when you're loaded up with a whole bunch of goodies and you've never gone through anything. But some of you came through the dirt. Some of you came through shame. Some of you came through hurt. I'm telling you, you will be the main ones that will rise to the highest level of this earth when God is ready to send his people forth and use them in miraculous ways. Verse 2, enlarge. So this is what you do in the meantime while you feel like you're still sitting on hold and they're flying by you. Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not. Lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. Why? For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. There's got to be life that you bring to other people's lives. There's got to be exuberance and purpose. You're going to bring a brilliance to some 
some very dark places in life. Just because of who you are and how God made you. All those years you were sitting there feeling like you were collecting dust. Feeling like you were getting nowhere fast. Feeling like nobody could care less what you had to say. Feeling like God didn't even want to use you. He even forgot all about you. Sat you up on the shelf collecting dust. And you're tripping over your own two feet, making bad choices sometimes, making bad matters worse because of your impatience, wondering when is my time. You rush ahead of God and make the wrong decision, and God in his mercy doesn't make you pay the penalty because he understands your impatience. But he knows what he's doing in your life. And even your failures will add to the power in which God will use you in these last days. So, I'm done. I want you to do what verse 2 and verse 3 says. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Now is the time. Feed, eat, drink, soak, pray, read, guard up yourselves in the most holy faith. Enlarge the place of thy tent. And let them stretch forth the curtain of thy inhabitations. Spare not. Or don't limit yourself. Don't shorten it. Don't half-step, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. I'm telling you, we, you and me included, we have no idea the ways that God is going to use us. We have no idea. Now, I want to share this with you before you get all excited about being on nationwide TV and and being a televangelist and being in the arena talking to 10,000 people all at one time. Let me take you to a time when I was doing prison ministry. And the Lord brought this to my mind so you don't start getting a big head wondering how God's going to use you in such phenomenal way. What God calls great many times we consider small. Think about it. Because we're looking at it through the eyes of pride. We're looking at it through the eyes of self-esteem, through the eyes of recognition, position. Anyway, now, what God showed me when I was going to prison ministry, I was going on Thursdays, to, uh, I think it was Tuesdays, Thursdays, and then on Sundays, once a month, I would go in and I would preach the gospel. I would have a service. But on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I was going up and down the hallways with the rest of the, the people. Some were chaplains, some were just volunteers. And we were just going up and down, pushing the little carts with books on them. You talk mundane. It was the most mundane feeling thing I ever did for prison ministry. I love preaching to people. That's, that's what I'm called to do. But I didn't have a divine call on me to walk around and pass out books. But that's what we did during the week. And there was no audience out there to clap and say, praise God for you, sister, mighty woman of God. There was nobody to say, you changed my life. What a wonderful saint you are. There was nobody to say any of that. But there would be moments of quiet prayer when I... You know, you'd hand somebody a book and they'd say, could you pray for me? Or you ask them if you have a prayer request, let me know. We could pray right now. Some accepted the Lord. Some just cried. Some just thanked you and walked away with their book. But what God showed me and all that, and then I'm done. He said some of those moments in his eyes were monumental because we have no idea in the mundane services of God how much impact we really have on an individual's life when we're not getting recognized and we're not getting applauded and we're not getting our ego stroke. What a wonderful preacher we are. What a wonderful singer we are. What a wonderful minister we are. What a wonderful... Blah, 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 blah. No, 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 we're not getting any of that. Mundane. Walking. 
walking miles through those halls, those cement floors, pushing those carts, passing out books. It wasn't a rewarding experience. I get my charge preaching to people. That's what lights my fire. Seeing the change on their face, the change on their countenance. But pushing those books, what God showed me is that's what lights his fire. The unseen services, the services that, that nobody knows, the unsung heroes, the little short chaplains walking up and down, praying for the, for the inmates quietly. Nobody's clapping for them. Nobody's patting them on the back. Nobody's giving them all kind of offerings and passing the plate and, and so they can buy a car. Nobody's doing all that for them. And God said, but their reward will be great in heaven. So there will be things you will see. And I'm done. I really am done now. There will be things you will do for God. Things that, you, that nobody sees you do, nobody hears you do, and don't sound the trumpet yourself. Or you will lose your reward. But whatever you do, just do what you do quietly, secretly. And God will make sure that everybody sees when he rewards you openly. Amen. You hear me? God bless Amen. you. Be encouraged and stick with number two and three for the rest of the week. Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitations. Spare not. Lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes for a breakout, baby. God bless you. And I'm done. Amen. 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 Um, Amen. When you were reading the first part of that, mm -hmm. um, it made me think of a scripture. It was it's in Isaiah sixty one, but yes. the, the power of praise, like because in the Bible back in the time, it was actually a curse. It was actually a curse. You were it seemed as a curse to be barren. Um, that's right. That's why, that's why you know, uh, it was a Samson's mom. She was like, she seemed like she was drunk in the church because she was so devastated and she was begging God that she, that, you know, and that's why you see so many women in the Bible, like when Jacob had his wives and they were like bickering back and forth about who could carry the son because she was barren. And like, if you look at a place like a desert barren land is just dry and like how we feel, that's even how we feel in our walk. When we go through those dry places in our walk and we're like, I can't even read my Bible. I can't even, you know. Um, so that's when God showed me about praising him. And it's hard to praise God. It's easy to praise God when things are good. But, like, how to praise God, and that's your, kind of like your weapon that you can use. Because there were times I couldn't pray. And it was hard for me to pray because I just felt so heavy or I felt so just I couldn't. I could not force myself. Like, I just felt like no matter how hard, I just couldn't get past this. Mm -hmm. I was, like, stuck. And then I was trying to read, and I felt stuck. And so God started to t show me, like, how the power of praise. And then that's when, um, like, it says, it talks about to, in Isaiah 61, it says to appoint them. And it's talking about different things, like the oil of joy for mourning. And for that spirit of heaviness, how the garment of praise can remove that heaviness, the physical heaviness or, or spiritual heaviness from us. So, like, praise is such a mighty weapon. Um, and that's another thing that, like, that Matthew was talking about, that's another thing that comes from our mouth. That's another thing that's powerful that comes with our from our mouth is to praise God. Especially, like the enemy especially doesn't like us to praise when we're going through the difficult time. Because right. we're still worshiping God in the midst of the struggle. Like he's because that's the that's the part of worshiping and praising. Like we worship him because he's good no matter what, but we're praising him even in the midst of our difficult situation. And that's yeah. not always easy to do and God inhabits the praise of his people so if you're right. praising God his presence is going to come to, to you you're going to feel his presence so it's going to minister to him but he's going to minister to, to you as well so Amen. and when you are continue to read um, and we're, you were talking about like right before when you were talking about like the death lit and all that and then breaking forth um, God I, it's so crazy I haven't had this analogy he given me a long time ago but the power of a seed, you know, like when it's in the, when you don't see it and you're talking about being so desolate, so all you see, all you see is the, the dirt, the dryness, but you don't see everything that's happening in that, that barren time. So there's the germination, there's the pressure, there's all the stuff going on. And when it breaks forth, 
I don't know if you, I don't know if I have the ability to present, but I'll show you what he wanted me to show you. I don't know if I do. Can, can you do that? Or maybe you can, Pat. But basically, oh, I just lost it. <laughs> I don't know where y'all are at. I lost you guys. But the, the power in the sea is so powerful. I can't see you guys. I don't know where you're oh, at. I see you, so keep going. Okay, Wait. but anyways, the power, I wish I had my phone or something. The power in the seat is so strong that it can break through concrete. Like, you know, right. when, you see, when you see, like, you know, the breaks in the road and stuff, like, that's, that's that whole process underneath that you feel like you're so desolate that God's preparing you for has the strength to break through, like, the concrete and um, very difficult times. So, like, that's why you have to go through that. So you have the strength to break forth and break through those hard barriers, whatever they may be. Amen. Amen. I don't know. I, I can't find you guys. I can't see you guys. I don't know where you're at. Don't worry about it, baby. Walk by faith, not by sight. Walk by faith, not by sight, baby. Oh, that's just Send me photographs of plants. But, um, so that was that, what it was. But praise I'm God. Like, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. You're good. Um, I'd like to say what I what my takeaway from it was, Sister Pat. Yeah. Um, what, 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 while you were ministering and reading the word, I heard the Lord say that I told you despise not thy small beginnings, your humble beginnings. Yes, that's right. Yep, he said that to me, and 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 he reminded me that um, it was it was a chuckle chuckle kind of one of those between you and God. You know, you you've had them before between you and God, right? Yeah. Well, I was looking at this young sister. She's uh, on fire for the Lord. But I've noticed some things. I noticed some things, and I was just like talking to the Lord about it. And I was like, "Oh Lord, that, what you, uh, she's getting a little. She's starting to feel herself. I'll just put it like that. <laughs> you could tell, you could tell because she's starting to get a lot of, um, you know, media coverage, and you know, people are starting to know who she is and stuff, right? Right. And and and, and I said to the Lord, and I said to the Lord, boy, God, it's something else, boy. I said, Lord. Well, you know, you are all that in a bag. Or you, you just everything. And I can see us getting a little besides ourselves because we're so proud to be yours. And he said, yeah, but, Lynette, that's how Satan got in trouble. <laughs> Pride. Pride. I, and, 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 and I thought, like, oh, well, okay. He said, it's, it's all right to, uh, you know, be, be, you know, proud of him and, and give him glory and stuff, because he says, I will share my glory with nobody, right? So I, I only said that to say that when you were talking about, like, when you were pushing the, the cart with it and everything, and the Lord was telling me how, you know, maybe I, I started off at, at a job cleaning toilets or something, but right. I was the next thing I know, I'm I'm the CEO of, of the place. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, but what I, well, I guess what I'm trying to say is God is showing me, that the key to this whole thing is love. And to remember what he said about Moses? He said Moses was a humble man. And he spoke face to face to God. See, I'm, I, it's like I think a lot of times our flesh gets, you know, our flesh wants to be recognized. Well, look at all this stuff I do. They don't say, they don't recognize me, blah, 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 blah right? And I'm starting to get to the point where, um, I don't know what happened. It's just like God is, is telling me that will hurt me if I start getting prideful because he will, your gift will make room for you, and people will start, you know, giving you accolades and doing stuff for you and all kind of stuff. I've had it happen before, but it's so easy to get caught up in that. And I think that's what the Lord was saying through your words right there, what you were saying. Don't get caught up in that. Don't get caught up in that. That was my takeaway. That's, I just wanted to, you know, share that with you. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think that's okay. funny how, sorry, I just think both of you guys' words came to me. I think it's so funny that the word praise and proud are very similar, but both to be to praise God and then to, to want to see the recognition for it turns you into proud, which God hates the most. Yeah. Know, the most be proud and you when we're praising him, we've got to be humble about it. I just think it's so funny how they're very close. In, in the yep. Right. So, yep, that's right. <laughs> Got to be careful. Got to be so careful because it's so easy to get caught up, you know. Right. It's so easy. 
get caught up. Right, right. See, when I preach to a group of people, the part that I love about it is I can see the impact on their face. I like person-to-person contact. I'm a face-to-face yeah. person. I don't care yeah, I if it's five that. people or 500 people, but I yeah. love the contact, and I love right. the feedback. There's an energy when we're all in the same room together. But right. there are people, there are times when we all as human beings think of great exploits as, as people like Joel Osteen and, and T.D. Jakes and all these big name people and some of them are anointed and some of them I don't know but the bottom line is God was showing me what was big to him right and right. that's right. the hardest part that's the hardest pill for us to swallow as people I was Come on now. excited there you, you said excited. something right there you said yeah. something right there. When I was preaching to 900 people in Camarillo at Ventura Youth Correctional Facility, that was the high. That was a high for me because I'm mm-hmm. interacting with all these men and women that were inmates. But when I'm talking to a group of people that are nine or ten people in a room yeah. and doing overcomers, that was just as much of a thrill. Mainly because I could feel the Lord moving, and it was more of yes. an individual thing. But yes. there's a yes. thrill when you preach to a crowd, and yes. that's a human thing. There's nothing that can match the excitement that goes with it. Some people right. do it as a source of pride, and some people just minister from their heart. And I'm one right. of those people I can minister to any size crowd and feel comfortable because I'm a people person. That's so right. I'm getting right. nervous getting on stage. I'm nervous about, Lord, am I hearing from you? Will they That's hear from you? Not, am I going to wow them? But it is more exciting. I would be lying if I said it wasn't. It's more well, the key word, the key word you said was power. You, you want power. Right. Right. But I understand where you're coming. Is that was that Sabrina that said that or Lynette? Lynette. Uh, uh, Lynette. Okay, I was gonna say Lynette first, but then I think Sabrina's name popped up earlier, so I wasn't sure. Um, no, I know exactly what you're talking about because um, I remember somebody telling me once, like I would just pray, you know, and someone's like, "Oh, you're a prayer warrior," and I'm like, "No, I'm not. I'm just, no, I'm not." And they're like, yeah, you are. And they kind of rebuke me, like, don't say, you know, like if someone's whatever. And I'm just like, okay. Well, I never really thought much about it. But then after a while, if people are like, oh, man, you, you pray like, you know. And I'm just like, what are they talking about? I never got it. But then I let it get to my head. Uh-huh. And then, so then I'm sitting here, like, trying to pray, like, what I thought were prayers. And so I'm like, pray to God's like, what yeah, what do you think that you're eating nowhere without prayer? And I'm like, <laughs> like, oh, something. And God's like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh. So he was like, no, you need to, like, just pray from your heart. Like, pray, you know, like, whatever. So I was like, all right, okay. Um, so I know what you're talking about. God's talking about it being humble, like it actually being humble. But this kind of goes back to what you're, we were talking about, being, like, in the truth, like, being truthful and, like, and how, like, the most smallest thing, everything that you do, you do into the glory of God.